In this video, we review how the equilibrium constant is affected by temperature from a quantitative manner. Right, so uh, we actually know how the equilibrium constant depends on temperature because the expression uh, that we have derived from the equilibrium constant that depends on the reaction Gibbs energy at the standard state is simply this. Um, Okay, so here you clearly have a te temperature dependence on uh, the uh, of, on the equilibrium constant, right? So notice that that's your equilibrium constant, and there's the temperature. So right, the question is, well, what else is there to know here or to derive? Or do you already have the explicit dependence of uh, the equilibrium constant and temperature in this expression? Well, a, a common mistake that people make is to consider that the temperature dependence only enters the expression here. But as it turns out, you can't forget that this uh, value, the reaction gives energy at the center state, that also depends on temperature. A way to prove that is to simply just write this uh, Gibbs energy as a function of the enthalpy and the entropy of the reaction, uh, where you can clearly see that you have a hidden temperature dependence also there, right? So notice that. Uh, well, this depends on temperature, that depends on temperature, but of course you have an explicit depend, uh, dependence on temperature here, so, so that value clearly does depend on temperature as well. Right, so, so uh, then the question is, well, uh, is there a compact way to be able to calculate how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature? And the answer is yes, this is not difficult to do. Uh, this is done by the Van Hoff equation, which we're going to derive in the next couple of minutes. Right, so actually our starting point is going to be the logarithmic version of this expression. Okay, so I would take logarithms of that expression. Uh, this is going to be natural log of the equilibrium constant is going to be equal to uh, the minus reaction gives energy at the standard state over RT. But of course we can unfold this uh, reaction gives energy in, uh, into enthalpy and entropy components. Right, so this is going to be minus delta RH, the standard state over RT, and then plus uh, delta RS over uh, R. Okay, that's what uh, uh, that expression turns into. Now, what we're going to do then is assume that we're actually trying to calculate this as just a single temperature, which we're going to call T1. Okay, so that will be the equilibrium constant at a, temp at a temperature T1 is going to be equal to uh, this, this expression, where this T will be T1. And then we're going to compare this to what would happen if you were to change the temperature to a temperature T2. Right? And we can write that expression on top of this one. Right? So the same expression at a different temperature, uh, T2, is going to be equal to the same thing. So this delta RG naught, which will be different, that changes with temperature uh, over RT2. And uh, we're just going to write here uh, the value for Gibbs energy, which is just um, a combination of the reaction enthalpy and the reaction entropy. Delta RS over R. And this is T2. Okay, so uh, then to find a closed form expression that can uh, allow you to calculate how explicitly the uh, equilibrium constant depends on temperature, we simply are going to take the difference between these two expressions, and that will give us the Van Hoff equation. Now, to do that, we're actually going to have to make an approximation. And that approximation is going to be that the enthalpy of the reaction and the entropy of the reaction will not change from T1 to T2. This is not true exactly, it's an approximation, but if your change of temperature from T1 to T2 is quite small, it's an approximation that works quite well. So for example, if you're interested in knowing how the equilibrium constant for a chemical reaction changes from room temperature, uh, 298 Kelvin, to human physiological temperature, 310 Kelvin, then that variation is only 12 Kelvin. Under those conditions, the reaction enthalpy and the reaction entropy are going to change very little. So this expression will actually work quite well. Okay. However, if there are uh, equation, uh, reactions for which if you uh, 
are interested in, in changes in temperature that are very dramatic, then this approximation won't work very well. Okay. All right, but uh, uh, that being said, we can uh, simply erase this just for convenience and then take the difference of these two expressions. And notice that conveniently, uh, if we assume that the entropies are the same, then that term cancels out. And then uh, what we're going to get out of this is the following, natural log of k at t2 over k at t1. Okay, notice that that will be the difference of two logarithms, but that is a natural log of the ratio. Okay, if this is equal to, we can take on a factor here of uh, this term, right? So that will be minus delta Rh over R at the standard state, and then this will just be 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, so this is what we call the Van Hoff equation, and it's an equation that allows you easily to calculate exactly how much the equilibrium constant uh, of a chemical reaction or a process changes with temperature. Now, the last thing that we can do in this video then is to make sure that this equation bears out the expectations from Le Chatelier principle that we reviewed in the last video, right? So from those, uh, you know, that discussion said that if you have an endothermic reaction and you increase the temperature, then the equilibrium constant should go up. But if you have an exothermic reaction and you increase the temperature, then the equilibrium constant uh, should go down. Okay, so, so the question is, does this Van Hoff equation bear out that expectation? And the answer is yes, right? So uh, let's, let's, see, let's see how. If you're increasing the temperature, then what happens is that this T2 is larger than T1. So that is going to make this whole parenthesis negative when you're increasing the temperature. All right, so if the reaction is endothermic, then this enthalpy will be positive, but you have a negative term right here, right? So negative with negative it will be positive, and what that means is that the equilibrium constant at T2 at the higher temperature is larger than the equilibrium constant at uh, uh, T1, because then uh, uh, you will have a positive or a, the natural, uh, natural log of a number that is larger than one, and that is positive. And conversely, if you have an exothermic reaction, what will happen is that this is still negative, but now that it's negative, which cancels with this negative, so all this will be positive. Positive with negative is negative, and what that means is uh, that what you have right here is the natural log of a number between zero and one. And the conclusion of that is that this equilibrium constant then is lower than the equilibrium constant at T1, and that means that the equilibrium constant goes down with increase in temperature for an exothermic reaction. Okay, so this uh, video has shown you how to derive the Van Hoff expression to calculate how the equilibrium constant depends on temperature, and it has also shown you how it really bursts out the expectations uh, based on Le Chatelier principle.